Have you ever wondered how much weight can an airplane carry? Of course, if you think of smaller airplane, then less number of passengers can fly. If you take larger airplane or bigger wide body airplane, then more number of passengers can fly. So you just load all the passengers and you just load full baggage and you fly. It doesn't always go like that. And there is a calculation of how much maximum weight or load an airplane can carry at a given point and for a given flight. Let's check what all factors would affect this. So we are going to discuss this in detail. There are three prime things to be considered when we talk about the maximum takeoff weight that we can carry for a given flight. One is the regulated takeoff mass, the regulated landing mass and maximum zero fuel mass. This regulated takeoff mass, which is the first factor, is dependent on two things. One is maximum structural takeoff mass and performance limited takeoff mass. Whichever is the least out of these would be the regulated takeoff mass. Maximum structural takeoff mass is the one which is given by manufacturer. The manufacturer would consider the maximum structural takeoff mass as the first thing while designing an airplane. So all the aspects and components of the airplane, including wings, tailplane, flaps, landing gear, all of it would be according to the maximum structural takeoff mass for which the designer is designing an airplane. Because whenever the airplane flies, then wings are the one to generate lift. So wings are lift generating devices. The weight of the airplane will act from center of gravity to the center of earth. And the lift is generated because the air flows over the airfoil at a certain speed, which causes reduction in pressure on upper surface of the aerofoil and that causes differential pressure between upper and lower surface of the aerofoil and upper surface pressure is low because of that the airplane will get upward lift and this lift needs to be generated in order for the airplane to get airborne so the area of the wing is in such a manner that it will generate adequate amount of lift to overcome the maximum weight the airplane is designed for that is maximum structural takeoff mass of course at any given point this maximum structural takeoff mass is never ever to be exceeded it is the design limit of the aircraft structure and it is to be respected at all times so maximum structural takeoff mass is given by the manufacturer which is mentioned in the airplane manual now, what is performance limited takeoff mass? When you depart from a given airfield, there are limiting conditions at the place of departure. There are many conditions like that, like field limit mass, there is climb limit mass, there is obstacle limit mass, there is VMBE, which is maximum brake energy limit speed. Then there is ACN PCN, which is the aircraft classification number and pavement classification number. So these limitations could be there at the place of departure. So what is field limit mass? Because of runway length, if runway is shorter at a given point where that particular airplane cannot take off with the maximum structural takeoff mass, then obviously you cannot carry that much amount of mass. That is field limit mass. This field limit mass is also affected by limiting conditions at the place of departure like pressure, temperature, humidity, etc. If you have higher density, then performance is better lift is generated easily because of the higher density air higher density is achieved if there is high pressure if there is low temperature and if there is low humidity okay high pressure high density and vice versa high temperature low density and vice versa high humidity low density and vice versa field limit mass then there is climb limit mass if there is any requirement to have a certain climb gradient during departure, in that case, you may not be able to climb with full load on the flight because when you have higher mass, then your climb gradient is also shallow and you may not be able to meet with the requirement of the departure SID. Okay, so that is climb limit mass. Obstacle limit mass. If you are departing from an airfield like Leh, where there are so many mountains around, 
or even uh, airports like Imphal, Guwahati, if there are so many mountains around and if your climb gradient is not being met with or what is required, then you will need to carry lesser amount of weight on the flight. That is obstacle limit mass. If in case the pavement is not suitable to carry higher weight on that particular runway, then also you cannot carry full load. So all these factors will not allow you to have or take off with the maximum structural takeoff mass. So because of that, you calculate performance limited takeoff mass. Okay, maximum structural takeoff mass, when you compare it with performance limited takeoff mass, then whichever is the least that will be regulated takeoff mass or RTOM. So we have considered all these factors and then calculated regulated takeoff mass. Now, what is this regulated landing mass? The way we have maximum structural takeoff mass in the same way we have maximum structural landing mass. The manufacturer will decide and determine that this is the maximum structural landing mass with which the airplane can land at any given airfield. For landing, you cannot exceed that particular weight at any given point. So that is maximum structural landing mass. Now, depending on the airfield, you may not be able to land with this maximum structural landing mass, but it can be reduced because of certain conditions at the place of destination and whatever the maximum mass the airplane can land with at destination is known as performance limited landing mass. The least of maximum structural landing mass and performance limited landing mass is known as regulated landing mass. So what is performance limited landing mass? Performance limited landing mass is landing mass reduced because of prevailing conditions at the place of destination like runway length. If in case runway is comparatively shorter, in that case you may not be land with the full load as maximum structural landing mass because you will require longer runway to stop the airplane which has higher weight. If the weight is lesser, it will take shorter landing distance. Field limit mass. So here you have the landing mass limited because of conditions at the place of destination like runway length prevailing conditions at destination like density which is affected by pressure, temperature, humidity, wind at destination etc. Then if at destination you have to do a go around then also you need to have a certain climb gradient like again in case of Leh or Jammu okay at those airports you know the mountains are there around the airport because of which the go around gradient is affected and that needs to be respected. So you need to consider go around performance as well at the time of landing. So here also you have to consider the climb limit mass for landing performance. Okay. So performance limited landing mass is landing mass calculated considering limiting conditions at the place of destination. Of course, this is landing mass. Now, if you want to know how much weight an airplane can carry at the time of takeoff considering this factor for landing then takeoff mass will be regulated landing mass plus trip fuel because trip fuel will be burned during flight from place of departure to destination and that way you will be able to calculate the takeoff mass so there are three factors which we'll consider for calculation of the maximum takeoff mass that you can carry for a given flight one is RTOM, second is RLM plus trip fuel and we are going to consider one more factor. Regulated landing mass is least of maximum structural landing mass and performance limited landing mass. That regulated landing mass plus trip fuel will give you takeoff mass. Now maximum zero fuel mass. Do you know that Airbus 350 carries about 1 lakh 50,000 liters of fuel in its wings. That is as good as 3,000 cars fuel consumption. That is carried in the wings. Why is fuel carried in the wings? Because lift is generated by wings and weight acts at center of gravity towards center of earth. These two forces will form a couple of forces. And if you consider these two wings, each wing produces 50% lift and the weight acts from center of gravity towards center of earth. So what happens? There will be lot of stress at the wing roots. And if there is no fuel carried in the wings, 
the amount of stress will keep on increasing. Of course, no manufacturer would want the stress to build up and wings break apart. So there is a maximum structural limit to how much amount of weight you can carry without having any fuel in the wings. That is called as maximum zero fuel weight or maximum zero fuel mass. Okay, so if you carry fuel in the wings, in that case, the weight of the fuel will act downward and it will relieve some of the stress which acts at wing roots. So fuel will help to relieve the stress. Because of that, without fuel or with less fuel or zero fuel, you can say, there is maximum weight which is given by the manufacturer, which should not be exceeded under any circumstances when you don't have any fuel in the wings. Okay, That maximum zero fuel mass is the airplane mass, which is the dry operating mass plus a load or a traffic load. Okay, So that should not be exceeded. So if you want to consider this criteria and calculate the takeoff mass, then you need to add a takeoff fuel to it. Now we have three criteria to consider for calculation of takeoff mass. One is regulated takeoff mass, other is regulated landing mass plus trip fuel, and the third one is maximum zero fuel mass plus takeoff fuel. Out of these three, whichever is the least will be the takeoff mass to be considered for that given flight. Now, when you substitute that value here, you will know the, what is the dry operating mass. Dry operating mass is the mass of the airplane which is basic empty mass plus special equipments plus emergency equipments plus crew plus uh, you know ex fire extinguishers plus the crew's baggage okay that is dry operating mass traffic load is weight of the passengers weight of the baggage and weight of cargo so that is traffic load and you have takeoff fuel okay so when you know what is the takeoff fuel we have already made a video there is a video link is there up here how to calculate how much amount of fuel you should have for a flight okay so that uh, way you will get this takeoff fuel value dry operating mass you can find out from the operations manual of the airline and traffic load is calculated in this manner for a given flight. Once you know takeoff mass, you know dry operating mass, you know takeoff fuel, you can calculate the traffic load. I hope this has simplified your concepts and uh, this is very, very important for payload and uh, yes, many questions are asked in the exam also from payload and uh, I hope this has simplified your uh, doubts and if you have any, feel free to reach out in the comments below. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead.